Hello sewing people of the internet. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this pair of pants based on a really old, really cheap pair of pants that I had for years and finally destroyed. Uh, it didn't go perfectly. I don't think I've ever done a project that has turned out exactly the way I intended it to. Um, and I had to make some uh, last minute decisions and compromises during the process. But hopefully you'll find something about this interesting uh, this is going to be a long, rambling video with a lot of talking um, and, and missing a lot of detail. This is not a tutorial on how to make pants. What I hope you get out of this is, uh, if you haven't tried making an article of clothing, maybe this will inspire you to try it. Um, and maybe you'll see some things that I did wrong and you can enlighten me on uh, how to do it better. Let's go back to the past and see how I started. So recently I've started dabbling in making clothing, something I have not done my lens is, either my lens, oh yeah, I've got a filter on here that's cracked. This is why I don't have a nice camera. Right, so recently I've started dabbling in making clothing, something that I really haven't done in the 10 plus years that I've been sewing. I made one pair of shorts a long time ago, but really that's the only time I've made clothing until recently. Uh, recently I made a couple of pairs, or a pair of shorts and a pair of pants based on Learn MYOG's Dias shorts pattern. Um, and I'm going to be doing some more of that soon, but um, I just thought, you know what, I'm kind of on a tear right now. So for several years, I've had these two pair of pants that I really loved that got to the point where they were worn out enough that I didn't want to wear them anymore. Uh, and I saved them specifically because I thought one day I'm going to try to pattern them and make them. So since I'm now trying to make clothing, I'm going to give this a shot. Uh, these have a tear in the rear so obviously that's not ideal. These just were really fraying a lot on the bottom. I don't know how well you can see that but trust me they're really frayed a lot on the bottom. Um, I bought these at like a Gap store for five dollars on the clearance rack maybe like 1998 <laughs> something like that. These have been like I wore them for a long time I love these pants. Um, couple things I would probably change about them, but I think uh, I think this might be what I start with. So I'm going to seam rip everything apart and break this down to its component pieces and then figure out, you know, like I already know I'm probably not going to have the flaps on the back pockets. Uh, I'm not going to have this extra coin pocket. I never use the coin pocket in any pants I have, so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, but other than that, I'll probably do a pretty faithful rendition. I just realized that this also is torn through on the front. I was trying to remember. Wait, there you go. I was trying to remember why I stopped wearing them. So anyway, I'm going to seam rip these. Uh, I don't think there's anything too interesting about seam ripping, so it probably won't show you a lot of that. And then we'll pick up after I get this ripped apart. Okay, so full disclosure, um, I had this orange canvas fabric. Um, it's the stuff that a lot of work pants are made out of, apparently, that I bought like five years ago and um, I thought I had enough left to make these pants, so I was going to make these crazy orange pants. And uh, I have a yard left of this material. It looks like I need about two yards. Um, this is one leg and pretty much all of the rest of the pieces, so I don't have enough left. If I cut all this out, I don't have enough left for the other leg. So I'm going to abandon this material and use a different material, but while I have this out here, what I did was I took all the pieces and uh, pressed them so that they would be as straight as possible and flat as possible so I can uh, mark them out. I'm just going to mark these and any that I need uh, mirror images of, I'll flip and remark them. So, but now i got to lay out a different piece of fabric. <laughs> the fabric I'm using is called Bull Denim and I purchased it at Joanne Fabrics because I happen to have one near me uh, and I didn't want to wait until I received something that I ordered. Um, so uh, the fun fact is, I think I mentioned I paid $5 for these pants many, many years ago and I spent $30 on fabric to try to replicate my $5 pants. So, yay. Uh, and I don't know how well you can see this. This may not appear to be the most efficient way to lay out these pieces on the fabric, but I'm trying to keep the grain running in the same direction as much as possible. So I'm going to lose some fabric, but that's okay with me. I'm just using this ruler to hold the edge in place. So 
I don't move it around as I'm drawing my lines. So I thought I was clever, um, and I thought I could just take a pattern off of one leg and then flip-flop that to do the other leg, but I haven't made pants with a fly before, and I think this, is, I think this side is different from the side that I already patterned. So I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and pattern this. Uh, one other thing I want to point out, if you're sharp-eyed, you may have noticed that the back of the pants legs on these pants is made up of two panels. There's a seam right here joining them. I think that's just an aesthetic thing, or maybe they did that to save material somehow or something. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make it one piece. So. Okay, so I'm kind of moving right along here. Uh, I've made a couple of mistakes, uh, especially as far as making a video is concerned. Uh, it occurred to me long after I took the previous pants apart, I never got any photos or footage of me wearing those pants. So you'll have to take my word for it if I say that the new pants fit exactly the same way. Um, and uh, I've gotten one leg put together, and after I, well, it's, it's pinned on the inside seam, uh, but after I sewed the outside seam, it occurred to me I probably should have pinned the pants together and tried them on uh, so I could make any adjustments before I sew everything. I think it's good. I pinned it and tried this one leg on, and I think I'm good. Uh, but, I mean, I could take the seam apart that I've done if I have to. So this is one complete leg minus the fly. I'm going to put the other leg together. And again, this, this side is just pinned. I'm going to put that together last. Uh, I'm going to put the other leg together. The pocket's already done. Um, and just for the sake of argument, the pocket, I, I sewed it wrong sides together and then flipped it and sewed it right sides together just to have a finished seam. And it has this facing of the exterior fabric so that so that gives you this look when the pocket's done uh, the original pants and a lot of pants i've looked at have a facing of the exterior fabric on the front of the pocket i didn't do that just because i forgot i think it's fine uh, might be a little bit more durable if i had done that but uh, this is my first try so i'm going to keep going as it is so I'm going to go ahead and put the other leg together and I'll try to show you some of that process. One other thing I'll point out for my back pockets, I'm just doing an open slip pocket or what do you call this? A patch pocket. It's just kind of like on a pair of jeans, just sewn on uh, to the exterior. Uh, all I ever keep in my back pocket is my phone. So this will be fine. I'll put another one on the other side, even though I never use it. Uh, there might be some weird occasion when I need to put it in the other pocket, but nothing else it'll look symmetrical so all right let's continue one of the joys about doing it this way uh, by which I mean not using a commercial pattern but taking apart something and putting it back together is it doesn't come with instructions on what order to do things so I might be doing this wrong but I'm sewing the pocket bag to the front of the leg right sides together and then I'll flip that and then sew a finish seam on it so it'll look like this and anybody who's been watching this channel for a really long time might know that I really don't love using pins but I don't know that there's a better way to do this most of the fabrics I've worked with historically have been uh, not conducive to using pins but they work very well for this. There's probably a reason why everybody uses them. I'm 
watched a lot of sewing videos over the years and I've seen people say never to sew over the pins and I've seen people sew over the pins all the time. I'm not sewing over the pins. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to switch to this Guterman thread. This is the kind of thread that you would normally see on top stitching on jeans. So I'm going to use that. I just put that goldish thread on the top side. I left the bobbin with the gray. Uh, I don't know if it really matters, but I think it looks nice that way. I'm just gonna stitch down uh, where the pocket is folded. Uh, no one's gonna see this, so I'm just gonna keep the gold thread in there just because I have it. So it's just a, I think just to kind of hold it in place. Maybe there's more to this than I realize, but that's what I'm doing. So that makes a complete front, well, complete without the fly and stuff, front, uh, right front leg. So uh, now I'm going to do an overcast stitch on the fly crotch area. Uh, I cannot overstate how little I know what I'm doing or whether this step is necessary now or if I'm doing this out of order. So again, if you're watching this because you want to make pants, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, hopefully this will inspire you, but you might want to look for somebody who knows what they're doing if you're trying to get this done efficiently. But anyway, that's what I did to the other leg, so that's what I'm going to do to this leg. So I just sewed the front leg to the back leg, right sides together, uh, and before I finished the seam, I went ahead and pinned it so I could try it on just the one leg and make sure that it seemed like it was fitting okay. It's kind of hard to tell with just one leg holding it up, you know, on me, but uh, seems fine, best I can tell. So I'm going to go ahead and surge or overlock the seam and then uh, fold the seam down and top stitch it and we'll proceed from there. I just wanted to point out though that I'm taking the time to pin it and at least kind of try it on before I proceed with finishing the seam. It's a lot easier to take it apart now than after I finish it.
you're sharp-eyed, you may know that there is a blade on sergers that will trim the seam allowance as you go. I'm not using that right now because I don't want to make a mistake and cut off something I shouldn't. Um, I don't know if that's right or not, but there's a reason that blade folds out of the way, so I'm going with that. This is a 1950s travel iron with no modern safety features and it will burn you. This is the pocket that I'm trying to match and that looks like that'll be close enough. So I took some measurements on the first leg and I need this pocket to be the edge of this pocket to be two inches from this folded edge on the seam between the back leg and the front leg. And then this top has a little bit of curvature to it, but it was about one and seven eighths here and about two here. So let's see if I can get that pretty close. All right, that's bang on two inches. So close. All right. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, I'm just going to call that good. I don't think anybody's going to be able to tell any difference. So I'm just going to pin this in place so that it doesn't move while I'm sewing it. Pro tip, you only wanna sew three sides of this. Don't sew the top. If you're new to the channel, I recently did a series about the Singer Heavy Duty Machine, a machine that I had long avoided because I didn't think I was gonna like it. Uh, and it's turned out to be actually really good. Uh, when I made this first pocket, I feared that it was gonna struggle on some of these thicker layer stacks uh, on the pocket and it didn't, so, and you'll see that now. This video is obviously not about this machine, but I just thought I'd mention that. I've done a couple of straight stitches. I'm gonna throw a zigzag on top of those straight stitches, just to kind of act as a bar tack, um, just to increase a little bit of strength at the top of the pocket that's gonna see the stress. I'm not gonna be carrying a lot of stuff in this pocket, but it just seems like a good idea. See, I had no trouble with that. I slowed down at the end just to be accurate, but the machine's not having a problem at all. Now I'm just gonna put a second row of stitching all the way around. When I was doing the first pocket on one of the turns, I forgot to put the foot down, the presser foot down, um, and I got a stitch or two in and realized what I was doing and it caught it in time. Well, I did it again, and uh, often that can result in very bad things, um, but all that really happened was I got off my line a lot, made this crazy zigzag, not zigzag, but just crooked stitch, 
Um, and I really don't want to have that, you know, be easily visible and I'd like this to be good. So I'm going to seam rip this out. Hopefully it's not going to be too obvious that I did some seam ripping here. If it is, I may have to make another pocket. Uh, but you know, I'm probably not the only person who makes mistakes. And if you're one of those people, I want you to be encouraged that you're not the only one to make mistakes. And I made a mistake here. So I'm going to try to fix this. Okay. Well, this material is pretty forgiving. You can't really, yeah, I can't even see where I seam ripped that out. So all good to continue. Okay. So <clears throat> I am not going to include any information about how to put the zipper fly together because I didn't know how to do it. Um, so I found a very helpful video on YouTube. I will link that in the description below if you are trying to figure out how to make a fly. That's the method I followed. I watched like three different tutorials and they all did it slightly differently. So there's certainly more than one way to do it, I guess. But um, the method that I followed was the one that made the most sense to me. And it's done now uh, and seems like it is a zipper fly and a pair of pants. So good enough. So now I'm proceeding to put the left and right legs together and I've started by pinning the back seam, the butt seam, I guess, uh, and I'm going to sew that first and then I'll serge it and top stitch it. Okay, I've pinned the inside seam of both legs and I've tried the pants on to make sure that I'm happy with the fit, and I am. So now I'm gonna sew the inside seam of both legs and uh, across the bottom of the crotch, do the overcasting and finish that seam, and then the body of the pants is completely done, then I have to do the waistband, which I'll probably have to do another day because I gotta go home. I don't know why I put the pins in facing with the uh, seam instead of perpendicular to the seam. Uh, old habit, I guess. It's easier to pull the pins out if they're facing that way, but I'm not that good at this. I don't know if I'm correct to do it this way. I'm starting at the crotch, I started at the crotch, went down one leg, and now I'm starting at the crotch going down the other leg. The reason I'm doing it that way is I think if I cause any misalignment of the two sides that I'm sewing together uh, and it becomes uneven, it'll be down here where I have to hem it anyway. I made the legs a little bit extra long, so it seemed like a safer way to do it. I didn't want to have like a big wrinkle right in my crotch. So. <laughs> I thought I was going to top stitch that seam, but I don't know that I can get all the way around, uh, and I don't think I need to. I think the surging should be enough. So unless I change my mind between now and the end of the video, uh, I'm going to say that this part of the pants, which is most of the pants, is done, and now I just have to make the waistband, uh, which includes the belt loops and the buttonhole and a button. So I'm guessing another few hours of work that I'll have today. So I'm pretty happy with this. I was hoping to get the fly done today. So the fact that the legs are closed is pretty good. So, so far I'm pretty happy with how this is going. I've added interfacing to the belt loop material. I had already started doing this and I made a bunch of individual loops and realized that was dumb. So I've just started with one strip long enough to make the five that I need. I'm going to fold it lengthwise, use the serger to finish the edges, and then fold it flat and put a double stitch on it so the inside will look something like that, and the outside will look more or less like the originals. So the outside of the belt loops looks fine to me. The inside, I mean, it doesn't matter because you won't be able to see it. What I'm concerned about is how long the wear of a belt sliding through here uh, will take to make this not structurally sound. 
I'm going to try really hard to put them in so that the belt is going against this uh, edge here. Um, this probably is not the best way to do this, but this is what I'm doing because it's what I have time for today. But if you are watching this and hoping to learn how to make a pair of pants, I'm not sure this is the best way to make this, but it'll probably do for now. So I've assembled the waistband and I didn't film any of it because again, I'm trying to figure a lot of this stuff out as I go and I don't want this video to be a four hour epic, but it's basically two strips that are folded in on each or on themselves to have finished edges. And then the top of the belt loops is sewn in between them on the top. And then it'll just sew to the pants on the bottom after I get this assembled. I've sewn a buttonhole in on one side and I got to put a button on the other when I get to that point. And now, um, I don't know if there's a better way to do this. I've got to sandwich this over the top of the pants where the waistband goes. And I don't have pins that are substantial enough to get through all these layers and long enough to hold it where I need it. So I think I'm just going to try to freehand this. This might be a terrible idea. I might be assembling this out of order and there's a much better, easier way to do this. I don't know, but this is what I'm going to try to do, so follow along at your own risk if you're trying this. Ow! There's a sewing machine there. Glad I didn't break it. Uh, okay, so uh, I put the waistband on. I think I said while I was putting it on that I wasn't sure if I was doing it in the right order. I'm also learning that it seems like there's lots of different ways to do things that aren't necessarily, quote, there's not one right way uh, that I can find anyway. So, but here's what I've learned. Uh, what I did was I attached the belt loops into the waistband and sewed it closed on the top first. And then I was going to just you know, put it down here and sew it down. But when I attached the waistband, the belt loops did not end up in the positions that I wanted them to be. For example, the back center one is not centered on the center seam. And this is what I realized. I should have put the waistband on without closing the top first and then inserted the belt loops as I closed it on the top, at least for this style of waistband. Uh, I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but um, so, Oh, I also just realized I got to do this over anyway because I didn't catch the uh, edge on this one. So definitely got to redo some stuff. Uh, I don't think I showed that clearly. This should be caught under the stitch line there and I missed it. So got some rework to do. Um, I guess I'm going to just take the whole waistband off and do this all over again. So I don't know if I could say that this happens in every project, but this happens to me a lot in a project where I'm doing something I haven't done before. I'm trying to figure it out as I go, but I've reached a point where I either need to take a lot of steps back and do a lot of work over again, or I have to improvise something in order to finish this project in a timely manner. I think I can do this in a way that no one will ever notice. And I'll ask you to keep it a secret between me and you. Uh, but somehow when I sewed the waistband on for the second time, Somehow it ended up not being long enough. It ends, I've already got this stuff clipped on here, but it ends right about here and it needs to go to here. I, and I don't know, it, it's on pretty smoothly all the way around. I don't have any wrinkles or anything. So uh, I, I think what I should have done is made the waistband assembly a couple of inches too long, sewn it on, and then as I sewed it on, determine the finished length and finish it that way. So the next time I make a pair of pants, I'll probably do that. Maybe there's an even more better way to do it than that. But so the quandary I have now is I either have to rip this all off and either try to sew it on again and hope that it somehow it gets longer or make an entire new waistband assembly. And I just really, I just don't want to. I want to get these done and wear them. Um, you know, part of this is an experiment anyway, and I may wear them for, you know, some short amount of time and realize there's a fatal flaw anyway. So I've just made a little extension piece. It's just folded over, same material as everything else it's made out of. Um, and I'm just going to make it 
so that it's long enough so I can get the button sewn on so it'll overlap with button hole and close the pants. Uh, it's probably not going to look that great, but I always wear a belt and I rarely tuck my shirt in, so it's unlikely that anybody's really ever going to see it anyway. But, uh, yeah. So, if you're following along and thinking about making a pair of pants and you haven't tried it before, first find a good tutorial about making pants if you can, but also just maybe I would make the waistband extra long and then cut it to size as you attach it to its final home. Anyway, I'm going to sew this on and keep going. I grabbed a pack of needles from home. I didn't have any hand sewing needles here. And uh, I probably should have looked because these are some very large needles. Much bigger than what I need for this, I think. But gotta make do with what I have, I guess. I can't tell you how many thimbles I've collected you know, just, that, that have come with sewing machines that I've obtained or whatever. Um, and this is the only one I can find. I think it's plastic, but anyway. Uh, if you don't know, a thimble is not to protect you from poking your finger. A thimble is to help you push the needle through the fabric without hurting your finger on the blunt end of the needle, which is still not the most comfortable thing to push with your finger, so. I don't do a lot of hand sewing, but I do know that. All right, well, they're pants. I still have to hem the bottoms of the pant legs, but uh, yeah, they're pants and they fit, so I guess that's a success. Uh, back pocket is perfect for the phone. I just, I sized the pocket just to be big enough for my phone. I put two pockets just to make it symmetrical. I don't know if I said that before or not. I will probably almost never, there, I put something in this pocket. That's probably the only time anything will ever go in that pocket, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they look, because uh, I'm not fashionable, but they're very comfortable. So, uh, I'm going to hem them, and then I have some final thoughts. Okay, I made a pair of pants. Uh, let's talk about them. I feel uncomfortable just having the camera pointed at my crotch the entire time. So, uh, so the first thing I want to point out about these pants is I made a really drastic mistake that uh, I will encourage you to avoid. Hopefully my mistake can be a learning point for other people. The fabric I bought, uh, it's labeled as bold denim. I got it at Joanne Fabrics. I, I'm sure I mentioned that at some point in the video already. Um, I didn't think it had a right side and a wrong side. Some fabrics are exactly the same on both sides. Some have a right side and a wrong side, and you want the right side to face out typically on your projects. Uh, they do have two different sides. The difference is incredibly subtle until you see it. Uh, I'll try to cut in some up-close footage of it. But basically what I did is the front panels, the two front legs, are wrong side out. I guess it's the wrong side. And the two back panels are what I believe to be right side out. Um, by the time I figured it out, it was way too late to do anything about it. So uh, that's just a mistake I made cutting out the pattern. Um, or I guess I could have oriented the other way during the sewing. But either way, um, either I would suggest getting fabric that has an obvious right side and an obvious wrong side, or if you have fabric that you're not sure or it seems like there could be a subtle difference, mark one side, uh, mark the wrong side of all your panels somehow so that you know, even like a piece of tape or something, just so you can keep them oriented until they're sewn together. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody will ever be able to tell. Uh, you'd have to be intimately close to me to know that there's a difference. But 
it could have been slightly less uh, subtle, but still, you know, missed my attention, and then I might have had to start all over again. So, just a point to consider. A um, couple of things I failed to do. Uh, one, I did not put a pocket facing on the inside outer panel of the pocket. So there's one on the inside, but not on the outside. Some pants have it. Uh, most of the pants I have, I think, have it. The ones I've looked at anyway. But others I don't think do. I think maybe like dress pants maybe might not have it as much. Um, I'm pretty sure I have pants that don't have it. But anyway, it doesn't matter uh, to me. Um, that might be a dead giveaway that these were made by an amateur to someone who really, really knows what they're talking about, but uh, I'll probably try to incorporate that in the future. Um, the hem gave me a little bit more trouble than I expected. Uh, I eventually got it, but it was maybe just a matter of me not knowing how to hem pants. I've probably done it three times in my life. But they're hemmed now, they're hemmed, and then they're what I think to be the right length. I like them. I think I talked about it, I'll, I'll show you some close-ups, but I ended up making the waistband not long enough and had to make an extension panel, and it doesn't look super good. Again, no one's ever going to see it or notice it, um, especially given that normally this is how I'm dressed or I have a, a button-down shirt untucked. I mean, I don't remember the last time I tucked my shirt in, but um, even if I tucked it in, if I had a you know decent belt on, I don't think anybody would know, or if they did even see it, they might not realize that it was uh, to cover a mistake. So, anyway, that said, uh, this was an incredibly satisfying project. The first thing I need to do is go make paper patterns of the original pants that I made, because these are super comfortable, I can tell you that already. Probably going to want to make some more, might make some changes to them, but uh, I'm not going to try to keep using the old pants pieces as a pattern, so I want to make a pattern so I can duplicate these, uh, probably make a couple more pairs, but um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, hopefully by now you've realized that I'm not an expert in apparel construction. This is my third or fourth, depending on how you count, attempt at making clothing, and this is probably the most ambitious because I wasn't working from a pattern or anything, but so. Uh, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, I don't know if you know this or not, clicking like and subscribing and making comments and stuff, all that stuff helps me buy parts for my Mini Cooper, which is broken again. So please keep up doing that for me. <laughs> so, but seriously, if you like this video, click like, subscribe, make comments. If you have questions, put them in the comments section, all that stuff. And uh, I'll be back with something probably different, but uh, maybe not. See you soon. Thanks for watching.